do. Uh, I do have Dr. B from the Department of Health here to answer questions about testing or other medical uh, related questions. Um, I know that, that you in the media and, and the people around the state of Louisiana are uh, waiting for more details on what comes after April 30th. I just don't have that information for you. We are working, trying to figure out where we are um, in terms of the threshold criteria uh, that we have to meet before we can move to phase one, exactly what phase one looks like, then what the timing is going to be and, and so forth. And, and we're going to have more on that uh, in the coming days. Uh, today for for testing uh, reports, uh, we we are reporting 331 new cases of COVID-19 across the state of Louisiana, um, and that's a smaller number of new cases than we've been reporting lately. I think that's the smallest in at least a week, uh, and it's uh, based on almost 6,300 new tests, which are more tests. So th that's uh, that's a good sign. Uh, the total number uh, of cases in Louisiana, as I think I may have just mentioned, is 24,854. Unfortunately, we did report today 77 new deaths, uh, and that's a total of 1,405 across Louisiana. The number of individuals uh, in the hospital uh, with a positive diagnosis of COVID-19 uh, is 1,798. Uh, that's an increase of only four uh, from yesterday. So it's basically flat across the state. Remarkably, vent utilization uh, continues to trend in a positive way as well um, because even though we have more cases, more people in the hospital, uh, we have 35 fewer vents being used today. Uh, so that, that is another uh, good sign. As I mentioned yesterday, you are going to start seeing new features on the dashboard that has been created by the Department of Health uh, to make uh, the data that they have as, as uh, transparent as possible and as easy as possible to digest. Uh, and they're going to uh, add new features uh, later this week that will give an even more complete picture of COVID-19. Uh, and one of those additions will be a racial breakdown on deaths. Uh, by region of the state, and there are nine regions uh, in the state that um, are used by LDH. Uh, and, and then, of course, the minimum number of deaths that, that uh, have to occur in a parish or region to be reported in this fashion is 25. Uh, and that's uh, based on CDC guidance on, on that. And so wherever you have 25 or more deaths in a parish, you will see um, the breakdown of that as it relates uh, to race. Uh, and in fact, uh, there are 11 parishes uh, where that information has already been made available by the Department of Health on the website. So if you're interested, you can go take a look at those parishes. And I don't know, uh, the, certainly the biggest parishes in the state are, are part of that um, 11, but we also have some smaller parishes, that, but with, with uh, more deaths than you would expect to have from small parishes like St. John of St. Charles um, in St. Landry. It is interesting to note that more than 21 million uh, views have taken place at LDH's website. That is a tremendous uh, number. And we're going to continue to make sure that we uh, present the data in a way that, that's easier to digest for the people, easier to understand, adds more clarity to the situation. Because quite frankly, that's going to help us as we move forward to make sure that we keep a lid on the cases uh, as we go forward over the coming weeks and months uh, and, and uh, we, we transition and open up more and more of our economy, we're going to be bringing people into contact with one another and we're going to have to very closely monitor uh, through testing uh, where we have cases uh, and so forth. And so this is going to really help us as well. Um, I told our team on the UCG call this morning that slowing the spread remains the number one priority uh, for us at the state level with all of our local partners and federal partners, but also it's the number one priority for the state as a whole. And I want to reinforce that uh, to all the people across the state. Uh, so all the things that we've been talking about for many weeks now uh, remain uh, incredibly important, uh, the number one priority for the state. Uh, so follow the stay-at-home order. Uh, please don't get out if you don't have to. And when you get out, um, 
Uh, make sure you don't take everyone uh, in your family. Practice social distancing when you do have to come into contact with other people because you go to the grocery store, the bank, the gas station, or the pharmacy, whatever. Make sure you're, you're wearing a mask. Wash your hands frequently. Use hand sanitizer. Stay home if you are sick. All of those things that we've been talking about are uh, incredibly important. So that's the number one important thing uh, for, for the state. Number two will be to increase our testing capacity, uh, which, which we've performed a lot of tests, especially for a state our size. But as we go forward, um, we know that we have to do more uh, when it comes to testing. Uh, and we've been talking about it. This is diagnostic testing and serology testing together. And we're working on that with local officials and, and, uh, and with our federal partners as well. And the third imperative is to um, make sure that we can engage in more contact tracing. Uh, as we test individuals and they become positive, we need to then be able to make contact with everyone that the positive individual came into contact with for about 48 hours before they became symptomatic. Uh, and then get those individuals to understand that they uh, may have come into contact with someone who was shedding virus uh, and that they need to uh, engage in quarantine. Uh, and, and that's, that's going to be key to us going forward uh, so that we can keep the case count down, obviously uh, keep the number of people who die from this disease to uh, the absolute minimum, uh, and, and then continue to open up the economy as we move forward. And it's not just our plan here in the state of Louisiana. This is what every state is doing. Uh, and by the way, it's a big part, very prominently featured uh, in the, the uh, plan that the president released last Thursday for reopening uh, the economy across the country. Uh, it's it, strong reliance on, on additional testing and contact tracing. Uh, I continue to uh, be extremely grateful uh, for the generosity that's being shown by so many businesses who continue uh, to donate uh, things to the state. Uh, BASF donated more than 800 gallons of hand sanitizer uh, to the state of Louisiana for distribution to hospitals and other health care and emergency response facilities. Facebook donated 25,000 KN95 masks to us uh, and 200 thermometers. Uh, and I found out today that Popeye's is funding one million meals for families in the New Orleans area uh, through the Second Harvest Food Bank, uh, which is the largest food bank for that region. I did uh, speak to the Popeye CEO earlier today to thank him for that generous uh, donation and also for um, the chicken that I enjoy on occasion. I happen to be a big fan of, of Popeye's uh, spicy fried chicken. Um, before I, I take some questions, I, I do want to remind us folks that, uh, that there's forecast out that calls for an enhanced risk of severe weather again tomorrow. Uh, the, the pattern we had settled into was that was happening on Sundays, but we have a midweek um, threat as well, and I'm asking people to pay attention to that. Uh, we obviously don't know uh, exactly where or when it, it might hit. The threat for North Louisiana is more uh, significant than in South Louisiana, yet again. I'm asking people to pay attention to their um, news stations and radio stations, check your local weather, heed the advice of your local officials, and then make sure that you're monitoring your cell phone too because quite often the last warning you might get before a tornado hits is gonna be that cell phone warning. And if you get that, please uh, heed that particular warning. Uh, just before I came in, um, I saw the, the headlines that it appears that the U.S. Senate is on the verge of passing by unanimous consent later today. Uh, additional relief uh, for the country, and, and certainly um, Louisiana will be uh, positioned to get its share of this as well. Uh, the primary focus was on replenishing the Paycheck Protection uh, Plan money. Uh, that the PPP that, that ran out uh, last week. There were $349 billion initially. I think there's another $321 billion in what's been agreed to uh, between the White House and Congress. Uh, that should be very helpful. Um, $75 billion for hospitals. Don't know exactly how that's going to get allocated yet, but that too will be, will be helpful. Uh, and then $25 billion for coronavirus testing that will include $11 billion that comes to the states. 
uh, again, this is following up on that imperative that we have about testing uh, going forward, and that, that will be uh, very helpful. Uh, tomorrow, we will have the first meeting of the Resilient Louisiana Commission. Uh, that'll be tomorrow afternoon. It's, it will be held um, remotely, and I will address the group to give it uh, some marching orders, so to speak. Uh, and then we'll be back here with a press conference tomorrow afternoon uh, at 2.30 um, in the afternoon. So we got a question from Abita Springs, and Ann wants to know, what are your secrets for de-stressing? I don't know that they're really uh, any secrets. Um, this is a stressful situation uh, for many people, um, including myself, but quite frankly, I don't, uh, uh, I try not to think of it as stressful for me because I, I think in comparison to what doctors and nurses and EMTs and paramedics and respiratory therapists and so forth uh, are going through, uh, but I do know that it's a stressful situation, regardless of your age, uh, because we have young kids who want to be in school and they're not in school and they're not seeing uh, their classmates. They're not going to the graduations that they would normally go to and all that sort of stuff. But no matter who you are out there, uh, if you're feeling anxious or stressed, there is free counseling uh, available. You can call 1-866-310-7977. 1-866-310-7977. It's open to anyone. It is free and it's confidential. Now, some of the things that I do to de-stress, um, I plant uh, and, and I planted a vegetable garden and I get to tend that a little bit every day to make sure that it's watered and weeded and that sort of thing. Um, I do continue to enjoy uh, my chickens and uh, making sure they're fed and well cared for. Um, now, what I haven't been doing as much as I should and we'll get back to because I think it would help me tremendously would be to do more exercise. Uh, so I'm going to do that and I encourage other people to do that uh, as well. And get outside and enjoy some fresh air, especially uh, when we do have good weather. We've been having a fair amount of that uh, lately. Watch a good movie. I don't recommend horror movies, especially those that are themed around pandemics and so forth. Um, and there are a lot of those on TV, by the way. I mean, there, there are a lot. I had no idea uh, that there were so many movies that have a theme that is uh, somewhat similar to what we're going through. So don't, don't watch those. Um, Becky from Shreveport asked a question that Dr. Bu is going to answer. And is there any knowledge or scientific research about the long-term effects upon genetics related to COVID-19? I'm going to ask him to come up and ask, answer that question. Thank you, Governor. And, and thank you, Becky, for the question. Um, I, I think it's actually a good opportunity to highlight uh, that there's a lot of long-term questions that we don't know about COVID-19, period. Um, uh, we became aware of the illness really in January, and we're now uh, in mid-April um, uh, trying to learn as much as we can. Um, and the specific question asks about you know, genetics. I'll say that in general, most infectious diseases and like uh, COVID-19, the the virus that, that we're all talking about, um, does not cause long-term genetic changes. Sometimes people have concerns about what happens if I'm infected um, with the virus uh, and I'm, I'm, a pregnant, uh, I'm, I'm pregnant and could be giving birth to a child. We know there was a lot of concerns around that when we were uh, uh, talking about Zika. Um, in this case, we don't have any evidence so far uh, that there's a direct impact um, on uh, the fetus uh, or on newborns. I will say there's been uh, several cases now uh, where women who had COVID-19 have given birth to babies who have tested negative. So it's truly really to say uh, that that means that there's no chance that the virus would uh, be able to be transmitted uh, from the mother to the fetus or to the baby uh, while still um, uh, in utero or inside. Uh, but, but it still uh, doesn't seem like there's a, an increased risk. Thank you. And with that, we'll take your questions. Great. Governor, you've made it clear that there's a lot of details to work out in the next phase. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, those are complete. But what is your sense about whether or not there'll be some form of your order ending in now just eight or nine days? Well, I'm, I don't bet very often, but if you made me bet a dollar, I would bet that on May the 1st, we'll be under a different order than we're under now, that we won't just continue it. But that really does depend on what happens over the next week or so. Um, because we have to make sure that we have those 14 days uh, where our trajectory is, is the way we want it as it relates to cases, as it relates to hospitalization, uh, 
capacity, I should say, of our hospitals. Um, and then an overall downward trajectory over 14 days of uh, influenza-like um, illness, ILI. Uh, and and so, so those are the things that we're monitoring. Hopefully that, that will uh, be the case and, and we can transition to something. I do want to continue to, to make sure people have realistic expectations about what that will look like, whether it happens May the 1st or sometime after that. It's not like we go back to where we were before. Um, but but it will be a gradual phased reopening of, of different parts of the economy. Uh, social distancing will remain a prominent feature of daily life. Uh, there will be still restrictions on crowd size and other limitations and to make sure we do things um, in, in a way that, that is as safe as possible. Uh, and then we're always going to be monitoring uh, through testing uh, and, and to, to see what, what happens. Um, but, but we believe that we can, uh, it, when the time is right, that we can move forward in, in a way that balances public safety on the one hand uh, and the need to, to gradually reopen the economy on the other, uh, relying upon the, the, the guidance we got from uh, the White House Coronavirus Task Force, informed as it was by the CDC, but also being vetted locally. Uh, in fact, you're already starting to see us do that. Yesterday, we issued an order from the Department of Health uh, geared directly towards uh, the resumption of non-emergency medical procedures uh, and surgical procedures uh, at clinics and, and hospitals around the state. Uh, and, and so we're, we're moving forward. I can't be more specific than that right now. I can only tell you that that is what we're working on uh, just about around the clock. Yes, sir. Governor, it seems health experts would agree that there's going to be some level of a resurgence of the virus once we start to reopen. Mm -hmm. And given the high prevalence of people with underlying conditions in Louisiana that's made our death rate so bad. What are you guys doing to prepare to make sure that that second wave doesn't also come with the second wave of deaths? Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's the $64 question, right? Uh, when, we, when we do this phased reopening, uh, it will always uh, be, be very clear that we're encouraging people who know that they are more vulnerable than others, either because of age or because of these chronic health conditions, and you know what they are. They are hypertension, kidney disease, heart disease, uh, obesity, uh, respiratory illnesses, and so forth, that they always exercise more caution. Uh, and so when you have limitations on crowd size, for example, that limitation is for someone who is relatively young and healthy, um, and, and it really doesn't apply to those people in those most vulnerable categories. They, they're going to have to be uh, more cautious. Um, and, and so we're going to continue to focus on that. Uh, with the work we're doing uh, with the um, task force we created to to um, uh, analyze the health disparities that we've seen across Louisiana, we're going to be communicating in the short term uh, the need for those individuals to be more cautious, but also to get in the best possible health. Uh, it is never too late to start eating better. It is never too late to reduce your sugar intake and your salt intake, to start exercising, make sure you're taking your medicines. Um, and one of the reasons that we are uh, opening up more uh, uh, outpatient services, for example, in our clinics and hospitals, is so these people can uh, start seeing their doctor again and get, get healthier. So that's always going to be a prominent feature, at least until such time as there is uh, an effective uh, therapeutic treatment, which as of right now, unless something happened today, there is not. Uh, and obviously we know there's no vaccine yet. Yes, ma'am. Governor, um, the Secretary of State has devised um, an emergency elections plan that's yeah. a little bit different than the first draft. Have you been in contact with him about his latest draft, and do you have thoughts on whether it does enough on the mail-in balloting piece? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, uh, he and I had an opportunity at 1 o'clock this afternoon to have a phone call, and I was, I was able to review um, the draft plan that he's submitting to the legislature before that call. Um, and I think it was that draft plan was calibrated uh, to make sure that it would enjoy the support of the majority of folks on the House and Senate Governmental Affairs Committee and do the most that it could to protect public health uh, while affording people a, a viable option to, to actually vote uh, in the primary in July and the uh, general election in August. I think his plan does that. Um, there, there will be uh, enhanced opportunities to request ballots by mail, 
uh, not quite uh, as open as it was in, in the first plan. But I, th I think it's a reasonable plan under the, under the circumstances, and I would hope that it meets with the uh, approval of the legislative committees tomorrow and the legislature as a whole uh, once it's voted upon by them uh, by mail, of course. Yes, sir. Um, so there's a group of people who are planning to have another protest at the Capitol this weekend, um, calling it in the shutdown, trying mm -hmm. to urge the state and the economy to open again. What do you say to them? Because uh, they're saying this is uh, taking their rights away from them. They want to get back to work. Nobody wants them back to work more than I do. Um, but also nobody wants them and others to be safe. Uh, and that we that we get on top of this of this virus in terms of the spread and, and the deaths that it's causing uh, you know, those things are imperative uh, and so the things I would say to them are no different different than what I've been saying to every person in Louisiana for weeks now uh, we, we have to be very uh, careful about balancing public health on the one hand the economy on the other uh, we're doing things as as uh, best we can with the information that we have relying on our federal partners uh, working with the president and the vice president with with their plan by the way their their um, uh, guidance uh, as to under what circumstances we should start uh, reopening the economy and then the phases by which we will do that uh, and uh, you know it, it's I haven't had an opportunity to visit with or observe any of the protests but understand they're rather political in nature um, and I would just make sure that they understand uh, that, that what we are doing is what we've been advised to do by the president and, and by the vice president. Um, and, and so we're going we're gonna to continue in the fashion that we've been uh, setting out. And, uh, you know, it's, there's four and a half, I'm sorry, 4.7 or so million people in, in Louisiana. Obviously, you're always going to have some people who feel differently about any given issue. And, and they always have the opportunity to uh, express themselves. I mean, that's one of the great things about living in the United States of America. Um, so they can make their views known. I'll continue to make mine known. Um, and we're going to move forward as, as best we can. But we're going to do it uh, in, in the manner that I have set forth here. Um, and, and I really don't need anybody protesting me uh, to tell me that we ought to open up the economy as soon as we can. Um, I get it. Nobody wants to do that more, more than I do. Uh, but as a governor, I'm going to protect public health uh, and safety. Um, you know, you, you hear uh, elected officials all the time talking about priority number one is public health, public safety. Well, this is one of those times where it obviously has to be uh, priority number one, but we're going we're gonna to start moving as we're able to uh, towards reopening the economy. Uh, it is a phased approach. Again, I don't want people having an unrealistic expectation that when the stay-at-home order goes away, whether that happens on May the 1st or not, that all of a sudden we're going to be free to do everything that we were doing uh, before this public health emergency ever came about because that's not going to be the case. Uh, and and there, there, there's nobody, uh, to my knowledge, uh, with any credibility on this issue who's recommending that we do that. And it's certainly not coming from the president or the vice president or anybody working with them. Yes, sir. Um, a couple questions on testing. You mentioned the fact that we, we've done pretty well in terms of our per capita rate of testing in Louisiana. Why exactly is that? Are there, are there factors to explain that? Have we gotten more help from the feds or, or you know, institutional support? And also, do you know on that $11 billion share of testing aid, do you know how much might come to Louisiana? No. They haven't even passed the bill yet. I think they're still putting the, the final uh, language in the bill. Um, but I did see where 11 billion uh, will go uh, to the states uh, out of the 25 billion dollars for testing, uh, and you know I would assume what they typically do is there's some formula uh, where they will they will have so much by population and then maybe so much more by tests. I'm sorry, by active cases as of the the date they pass it or whatever. I, I'm not sure, or they may just tell. Um, uh, Health and Human Services, uh, the FDA, to figure out what that allocation is going to look like later. Um, so, so I don't know. We have received uh, significant help from the federal government. Um, we were among the very first states, for example, with drive-through testing created in partnership with the federal government. Uh, so Health and Human Services sent people down here to help us set those uh, test sites up. FEMA resourced them um, and, and, and paid for the, the lab 
uh, the, the labs that were actually doing the testing for us, so LabCorp on one hand and Quest on the other. And so that, that helped us every day uh, test 750 people, um, 750 people that before other states could get that uh, going. Uh, we've expanded capacity at our state lab. Uh, but folks like Oxner have come on board with tremendous testing. And, and really, when I start naming names, I know I'm going to leave some out, and I, I don't mean to do that. But in trying to answer your questions, you, you look at North Louisiana uh, and, and LSU and Shreveport. Uh, tremendous testing capacity has been ramped up there, and they're testing not just for northwest Louisiana, but because they also, uh, Oxner's in, in, uh, uh, administers the hospital in Monroe, Conway. They're testing over in, in northeast Louisiana as well. And so just the, the number of tests have, have really ramped up, and, and that has to continue. Um, and what we're trying to do now is make sure that we're increasing our in-state capacity as much as possible identifying every lab that, that has capacity to do uh, this COVID-19 diagnostic testing, uh, make sure that, they're, that they can turn around a specimen uh, pretty quickly, get it tested, and get the result back to us, uh, because that's going to be really important for us going forward. And, and I'm, I know there are some other... Oh, we, we have uh, local folks here who are uh, manufacturing viral transport medium. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, higher ed uh, 3D printing uh, devices that are printing swabs uh, for us to use, and and I'm not I'm not saying this to say we've got it all figured out and we've got everything that we need in terms of our capacity, but those are the sorts of things we've been doing, doing in Louisiana to really ramp up our testing capacity. And then you've got Walgreens uh, that that's doing testing, and you got Walmart uh, that's that's doing testing as well. And all all of this together just makes a tremendous difference. Last question. Well, on that subject of testing, you talk about serology testing, but do you know of any serology testing that um, is certain to be accurate and is available in the state at this point? Well, when you say certain to be accurate, serology testing is notorious for being um, having a, a rate of, of inaccuracy, I guess. Um, and you typically don't use one... Uh, serology test in isolation from others to inform decisions and, and so forth. Uh, and that's for a variety of reasons. Uh, so I cannot tell you that I know of a serology test that is 100% accurate today. We do know that some are much more accurate than others. Um, and I do know that, that we have increasing numbers of antibody testing that's available in the state of Louisiana. Uh, for example, I had a conversation with Warner Thomas last week, and he told me he had 20,000. And that he would get he would get twenty thousand more uh, serology tests in before the end of the month, and so that's that's just one healthcare provider. So th they are coming online. We have been advised by the vice president and Dr. Burks, and I think particularly by the FDA, uh, who told us we need to be very careful because there are some serology tests out there internationally that are being promoted in the United States that they do not find accurate enough and and that we should stay, stay away from those but they've given us a listing of the ones that they believe that, that we should use obviously we're going to move in that direction and and additional ones will continue to come online they're relatively cheap uh, and can be very accurate I, I think they can be mass produced for about a dollar a test um so so it's it's something that that we know is going to be very important going forward and uh, but folks, um, I know that, that in Shreveport, LSU's moving uh, to do antibody testing. I, I mentioned Oxner, and, and so we'll, we'll have a lot of that capacity in the state uh, before too long. Okay, so tomorrow, same time? Same time. Same time at 2.30. At um, I want to continue to thank you for uh, helping us to communicate with the people of Louisiana, and I want to continue to thank the people of Louisiana uh, for doing what needs to be done when it comes to complying with the stay-at-home order, uh, making sure that we're uh, uh, social distancing as, as we need to, and then following proper hygiene. Um, I am absolutely confident we're going to get through this, and it's not going to be soon. Uh, I know that, and, and it's not going to be without uh, some hiccups along the way, but we're going to make sure we have in place what we need uh, to monitor what's happening around the state of Louisiana as we move forward so that we can adjust as necessary uh, to always promote public health, protect public health, even as we 
open up our economy and, and get people moving again. So God bless and thank you.